Here are the sections of the gingerbread house that I've already pre-cut. The larger piece here is for the roof. Then there's two smaller rectangles for the side parts. I've got some windows or a door. I think that one's a door and these are the windows. And some stars that I'm going to use to make some little wreaths to hang above the door. This year I decided not to put any uh, stained glass windows on the house because I forgot to buy the lollies, hence the decision. So I'm going to actually use these to uh, decorate and make them look as windows and then glue them in place. Here's the rest of the gingerbread men and gingerbread stars. And these are the fronts and backs of the house. And that's the last part of the roof. Over here I finished mixing my uh, royal icing. I prefer to buy my powder pre-bought. This is the brand that I use. Um, I don't know about any other store-bought ones, um, but this is the one that I found readily available from uh, my local baking store. You can see that I've already got my disposable bags pre-bagged pre ready with all of the different nibs. And these are the lollies that I've chosen to use. I've got the Wilton's uh, icing colour because it gives the most purest colour and no flavour. And these are all the lollies that I'm using. This year uh, I asked the kids what type of gingerbread house that they like and they said red and white so we've gone for red and white as a theme I've got some sour straps some candy canes these are oh, white mint lollies jaffas raspberries just those jelly raspberries raspberry bullets and I've cut one of them here so that you can see what it'll look like on the inside so I'm actually going to slice those into little pieces to use as decoration and lengthways oh, to use as something else I haven't decided quite yet but it still keeps in the theme of red and white and then I've got pink musks as well um, just as a contrast it still sort of keeps within the the tonal values but um, the hint that I'll give you here is don't leave musk lollies in with the rest of your lollies even though they're all in bags all of these lollies now taste like musk um, and this bag has not been opened, but it permeated through everything. So unfortunately, everything tastes like musk now. Um, and we'll get on with the decorating. As you can see, I've got all my bags pre-filled now with the uh, royal icing. And that's really important so that you can swap between all of your icings for the shape nozzles that you're going to use. It's better to be prepared and have everything ready than to try and make up bags quickly of all your icings. And these can actually stay in the bags for um, a few days, sometimes even up to a week. I put them inside a um, plastic storage box. You roll them down tight, fold the corners in and then roll them down really tightly. And then you should be right to keep those for a few days. It helps, especially if you're planning a big project like a gingerbread house. I actually bake the gingerbread um, a day or two before. You can even freeze that gingerbread recipe that I've given uh, and keep it in the freezer for a week or two so that you're not overwhelmed with all the baking and decorating and everything that you need to do all in one hit. So I actually baked all this gingerbread a few weeks ago, probably two weeks ago. Uh, try not to roll out your gingerbread on a hot humid day because it gets too sticky. It doesn't matter how much air conditioning you have on, it will just stick to the table and melt. Um, so I work with the small packs of gingerbread at a time, uh, gingerbread dough at a time, taken from the fridge, roll it out, use it, and then pull out the next lot of dough when you're ready to work with it. Otherwise it just melts too much here in um, an Australian summer. So... We'll move on to the next part. Oh, you'll also notice that my red icing isn't quite red and that's because I didn't buy enough uh, red food colouring. So make sure that you have enough red food colouring otherwise you'll end up with this pinky colour. Which is okay because we've got other bits and pieces of different varied themes of red and pink and white anyway. That's what I'm sticking with. So here are the windows. And you can see here with this one, I've just piped a really thin outline around the outside and divided it into a four square. And then I've added some stripes down 
the top half and then some little loops at the bottom. I'm going to make it look like a um, curtain. And in between the white stripes, I'm actually going to paint some red ones to finish off the curtain effect. I also forgot to add earlier that I added some raspberry flavouring um, to the icing mixture. I really like the idea of adding flavourings to your icing for gingerbread. And try and pick a flavouring that's nice in contrast to the ginger. I don't particularly like using peppermint flavouring with gingerbread because the gingerbread is really spicy and has a really strong flavour. And you don't want to have a, a really strong flavoured biscuit contrasting with a really strong flavoured icing. So I try and stick to raspberry. It's a really nice sort of lolly flavoured um, icing and it complements the rest of the lollies that you're going to put onto it as well as the gingerbread quite well. Or you could just go um, the plain icing flavour, but I, I like to have a little bit of extra to it. Now, if you make a mistake with your icing, all the white part is fairly dry and I always wait between color layers or texture layers that you're going to add before I add um, something new. You can use a brush. This is a sable brush, um, like the one that I used for uh, my daughter's second birthday cake to do all the hand painting. And wet the brush and then you can start to lift off bits of that icing and then you'll see that it doesn't quite stick I'm doing this holding the camera in my other hand at the moment so You can see that it's still trying to remove that bit wasn't quite dry. Now I'm actually just going to go and clean this brush and I'll come back. Now you can see I've removed the rest of the pinky red icing. There's still going to be a little bit of discolourment and you could probably pipe over that uh, white area again but I just want to show you that you can get rid of the work that you've done underneath without worrying or having to go uh, too much over it again. So all the windows are finished now and I've just finished each window off with a little bit of icing behind the silver cashew. I didn't show you those earlier but um, I've got a container filled with um, silver and gold ones and it just finishes off the, the little curtains in the windows and I'll wait for those to totally set before I put them onto the rest of the gingerbread pieces. It's important to do all the pieces uh, first and decorate them flat and then we'll look at assembling uh, the whole gingerbread house. I'm now doing the roof and I've decided to use the sour sugar straps for the roof. I don't really have much time today, but you can see from some of the other examples that I'll put in this video of previous gingerbread houses, how I've done different roof designs. But this is all sparkly and it sort of looks Christmassy. So I've decided to use these. Now, before I attach these, you can see that on the gingerbread uh, roof that I've applied some icing in an up and down motion and a crosswards. That's important so that you're making sure that this is going to stick as best as you can. If you've ever done tiling, you sort of have to scratch it one way and scratch it up the other just so that it makes sure that it sticks. And that's the same sort of philosophy that I'm going to use with this to make sure that it's going to stick. And just place that, push those into place. Now you can see that I'm leaving a little gap, almost like a grouting gap and that's because I'm going to pipe a white design down in between that little gap just to decorate make it look a little bit more decorative 